That's Chris playing some music. Lovely <laughs> music, by the way. <laughs> and you are now live, guys. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this evening's FBS chat. Uh, our host, uh, sorry, our guest this evening is Zainet. Thank you, Zainet, for joining us, spending some time with us. And my co-host, Chris. Well, I don't know what to say. Can I'm you very, say, very nervous. Can you say Chris? Why Why do we always say Chris? It's Chris. It's Chris, because it's Chris. Well, can't we just say Chris? What is it about All Chris right. that makes us say Chris? I was, I've been trained by Chris and I always felt really nervous in his presence because of because of how great he is. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'll try and pretend he's not here. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous in my presence as well. <laughs> a life of nervousness. <laughs> so, uh, Zainab, uh, thank you. Um, we'll get to know about your your work and and your passions later on. I'm I'm always interested in how um, how you came across solution focused and how it changed your view of the work that you do. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, it's amazing to be here with you all, uh, actually. Um, you know, I had a, a boss in Turkey. Uh, he is an old friend of Chris. And yes, when I was a, a student at Queen Mary University of London, when I was doing my master's on psychological therapies, he advised me to go and knock on Chris's door, which is in Barbican, mm. uh, where my school is also located. So I just knocked on the door and I found the Chris and He's been always like welcoming, warm and nice and encouraging this young girl on these days, saying, okay, join our courses and train with us. So I trained with Chris. It was a great opportunity, I believe, in my life. But on these days, my I studied, I mean, earlier I studied on psychology in Turkey and my psychology degree was full of psychoanalytic approach, actually. So my mind was totally in the past, conflicts, traumas, and asking all these problem-focused questions. And even the solution-focused approach was like a sink from the other approach. <laughs> so I, when I was with like Chris and I was trained with him, in the beginning, it was quite difficult for me. It was definitely like a mind shift uh, for me. But then uh, it happened. <laughs> I mean, my mind really shifted to the solution, asking solution focused questions and everything. And I kept going to the, uh, I kept taking the trainings uh, with Chris and Harvey. It's brief. Then it really improved my um, counseling skills because uh, I'm working with individuals, families, couples, sometimes young people. It's amazing for me to uh, ask them some solution-focused questions and seeing how they can build their own solutions, uh, small bricks on their own walls, creating new opportunities about their lives. Uh, so it really enhanced my job, my service. Mm. Yes. Hope this answers. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um so when, when obviously when, when you went to to Chris and Brief and I know because I've, I've I've been there myself although I wasn't I wasn't psychologically trained so for me it wasn't I don't know it wasn't so much of a shift from what I already was taught. Okay. So um, what what was it about that that you thought that this um, this has really got this is this has really got some um, some usefulness to me. Hi, Tara. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. That's all right, Tara. We'll forgive you. Thanks. I was delivering training. So. Okay. Nice to see you. So, so when obviously when you went to brief and you and you started to see the solution focused approach, um, not concerning yourself about the unchangeable past. How how did that how did that feel for you? Hmm. Um, it. No, 
I always uh, I'm always keeping in my my life. Let's acknowledge the past. Let's let's acknowledge what what happened, how you felt. One foot is there, but one foot is always in the possibilities, in the opportunities, and in the future. So it's really as a therapist, it gives me hope. Uh, the approach itself gives me hope and uh, the trust that there are solutions and we'll find them and trust the client, trust the process and just do your job and uh, you'll get there. So it's really uh, shifted my mind this way and also I understand that it doesn't have to take years to achieve, to, to achieve the therapy goal so you can get there quickly because you have lots of capacities, resources, and it's happening. Yes. Yes. Chris, what do you remember of Zeynep when she first knocked on your door? Um, actually, my, um, my, my memory is a bit of a muddle, uh, but I, I associate you more with this um, Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I think you might have translated it. It was oh, uh, wow. 2011, and I think we, you trans you were the translator for the course I did there. I um, and I remember very, very, very vividly that you must have been about 12, I think. <laughs> asking me if it was all right and you were doing an absolute brilliant job every now and again someone would come in and, and make an alternative translation and <laughs> you get, you'd get quite cross with them uh, in, in fact uh, both both translations were equally valid because like solution parts it's so difficult to actually um, yeah. sorry it's so difficult to sort of um, say what it is. <laughs> anyway, I just love that. I love that. That reminds me of you back then. And it was just really nice, what, two years ago, to be running a course with you, to be co directing, co running a course with you again in, uh, in Istanbul. So that's it. Mm. Um, two memories. Mm. I, what I also remember of you is just how hard you work. You were doing mm -hmm. courses and then going off in the evening, doing your coursework for your master's degree. Just solid work all day, evenings, weekends. It's just incredible how hard you, how you work. And, um, the both got you star, a star in the um, in our firmament. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tara. Yes. Do you like to be positively curious about Zeynep? Well, it's really lovely to meet you and um and lovely to see you all and um see we're we're linked on Facebook and um which is really lovely and I was reading um your bio just ahead of this evening's um interview and kind of noticing all of the things that that you've done so just highlighting what chris said there about how hard you obviously work and i think what, what i was really really drawn to was about the edr um and yeah and really curious to know a little bit more about that and about whether you're using that alongside solution focused and yeah i'm just yeah fascinated to to hear a little bit more about that if that's okay to ask that now sure sure okay let me try to answer um actually i met with emdr around 2011 right after solution focused brief therapy and um what I love about EMDR is that it really helps uh, to work on uh, some traumatic memories. For example, if someone has a car accident, 
and then uh, after this, if the person is getting very anxious to get on a car again, let's say, uh, or having some flashbacks about it, we understand that the person still feels disturbed about this car accident memory. Mm -hmm. At this stage, actually, EMDR asks the person to remember this event again. Uh, but staying one foot in the room with the therapist or the counselor or the uh, professional and the, uh, the other foot is on the trauma. So when the person is focusing on the traumatic memory, which is, let's say, car accident, the therapist asks her, her or him move the eyes from right to left, back and forth. It's, it's not quite weird and all I do is from a psychotherapy perspective. But uh, we understand that um, the more we do this uh, eye movement, uh, the, the disturbance uh, about the memory gets down, like it almost like fades away. Uh, you can't really remember the memory. And actually, it's image. And the feelings about the memory and the body sensations about the memory are also like uh, decreasing, going away. And the person, for example, uh, if she or he will define uh, himself or herself like I'm in danger when they think of a car, then they can now say, I am safe anymore, it is finished, I am safe, it's all done. Uh, this is quite difficult. how EMDR does it, what happens in the brain, and they are still searching, researching about it. Um, but it gives opportunity to us, uh, you know, to almost um, get out of the traumatic memories effects, uh, negative effects. And how I combine it with the uh, solution focus brief therapy, actually. Let's go with this car accident example. If we uh, work with uh, this car accident memory and it's done, okay? But actually, as you know, uh, any single negative event which happens to a person affects their relationships, affects their family uh, members. For example, if this person's uh, husband, let's say, is uh, insisting on get on a car with me let's just go and do this job you know why are you feeling with all this anxiety around the car and stuff he also uh, can talk with this person using solution focused therapy with therapy uh, talk about their relationship with their let's say husband so uh, you can ask like uh, what is the miracle day about this getting on a car and having a journey as a family you know without any anxiety or any fear uh, so i can uh, get lots of detailed pictures of a miracle day for example having a family journey which is peaceful and full of fun mm -hmm. uh, so i believe that combining them gives me opportunity to talk about the relationships having better or healthy relationships within the family uh, and also for for also only the person as well but i don't know if this makes sense this is how i think about it yeah it's fascinating yes thank yeah. you yeah. <laughs> i found i was doing a bit of research on it earlier and i found this study where I think it was with nine to 12 year olds and using SF and EMDR and they were inviting the children to um, sort of focus on their own, on, to, to say what their hopes are. So to to say where they wanted, the, what area they wanted to, to focus on in relation to the EMDR. So it's quite mm -hmm. interesting, fascinating. Yes, yes, it really is because I believe EMDR gives opportunity to work on the memory. Okay, wonderful. But actually, it doesn't give opportunity to talk about daily life or relationships, okay. how, how, how your life is going to go. So it's very, very good to combine them for me. Uh, for example, I had a tiny pathetic client. So she had started having this pandemic after the death of her father. So I am here, I believe. 
EMDR says that the, this death, this loss, may cause these panic attacks from a problem-focused approach. So we can work on this memory. We can somehow uh, help the help I'm here, right? Yes, okay. Help the client stop having like uh, panic attacks, okay. But we also design um, talk about uh, her life, how to go to a, let's say, shopping mall with the boyfriend or how to, you know, having a journey, getting on a bus, bus for example, or a coach with, the, with her mother and go to another city, which was not possible for her with the panics or visiting a friend, living out of the city and spending a few days on their home. Uh, we can talk about all these possibilities using solution-focused approach. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mm, thank you. It's really, really interesting. Thank you. Could you, could you tell us, um, Zainab, a little bit about the work with Syrian refugees using uh, EMDR? Mm. Yes, okay. I was only 24 years old on these days <laughs> when we were at the border of Syria. Um, it was a very, very dangerous place, wasn't it? It really was. And actually, um, we were seeing these bombs are falling down, you know. it's There is this space between Turkey and Syria. It's called as like a safe part. Uh, I don't know how much safe it is, but it was easy to hear the voices and seeing the bombs. And it's quite the interesting areas, just sand and flat place. People are really walking and coming to the border and Turkey was welcoming them and providing them some uh, shelter and food and stuff. Um, yeah, only my boss, Emre, and I went there first. It was. Uh, quite, it looks quite uh, dangerous in the beginning. <laughs> and the people were usually women uh, who, I mean, they lost their husbands, they left their children, or for example, uh, they have, let's say, three sons, and two sons are in, back in the war, uh, one is here, but people were keep migrating uh, to the safe zone and then actually uh, when the people come for example one woman is settled in the uh, area but other woman which is relative of her is coming again and then she brings news about her sons in the war saying that one is being like kidnapped and stuff so it's quite ongoing mm -hmm. trauma mm -hmm. he arrived there i remember the moment when i said like how can we help them, you know, what can be useful or how, how you know, as an even mental health provider or whatever. It was quite touchy actually, but then, um, then we sat down and we started to build relationships actually with these uh, beautiful people. Uh, we just listened to them, we just tried to say, uh, we came just to listen to you and help you and stuff. It was quite a heavy experience for me. Uh, but what we did actually, we did some group therapy there. We, we gathered like women in one room and men to the other room and we had a trans, um, uh, not a translator, but the person doing the translation. Um, yes. Interpreter. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Interpreter. Uh, it was quite amazing because interpreters were, were also traumatized because they were also coming to the same place. So mm -hmm. we understand that we should first prepare the staff to work with us and then do the work. Uh, so we did teach them some stabilization techniques, which is like uh, breathing or imagining a safe place and regulate, we call them, regulate themselves first and then we did the job. In the job, we used a group therapy format of EMDR therapy. Uh, so it's another specific thing. Uh, we use some materials to, to process their memories. Uh, we were there with, with a team uh, of uh, DBE, which was in, a, in, in Turkey, my ex, and still actually workplace. Um, 
it the, the work starts with finding a safe place for the clients themselves so as the place where we were was not even safe imagine a therapy room which is not safe physically uh, it was quite difficult but we asked them to imagine somewhere they usually imagined the heaven or some other places where they really feel safe when they imagine so first of all we regulated them having some sense of safety and then we worked on their war trauma using emdr as a group uh, we were like a team there with my uh, dear colleagues from turkey and then yes it was a great experience for us and eventually we did actually uh, three days uh, we spent there three days and each day we did almost uh, two or three hours group therapy sessions and at the end of it people were saying like we are able to sleep again we are able to eat again yes it's not easy wow. to survive but uh, we, we know that we can we are breathing again we are more here now okay my two sons are there in the world but i had the I had one of them with me and I have another daughter, so let me uh, go back to life with them, so them. Things like that. It was amazing and it also increased my belief to psychotherapy, counseling, coaching, all these mental health services, even in these positions. I, I don't know if this answers. Mm, very much. <laughs> amazing, amazing work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just yeah. thinking that as, as you were saying that, Zainab, it, it seemed such a hopeless situation to be in. So, um, how, how, are you, how did you manage to manifest some hope in what seemed like a desperate, desperate situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Actually, first of all, again and again, I believe uh, the relationship that we had there, that we built there, mm -hmm was giving some sense of sharing and somehow someone was listening after all what happened to them and i believe the more you talk about the memory the more it consolidates the more it makes sense it's not easy but it's good to feel that somebody is caring about you and there to listen or you know accompany at least and the other thing is uh what they did actually when we asked about the safe place some of them imagine this heaven and uh, this gives them the idea that this comes from god according to their belief and the god will save them after all and avoid them blah blah so they they find some hope okay this world is not so good but there is hope we'll reach there it's me it was meaningful to their understanding you know so it, this, this gave them somehow uh, hope. I don't, I don't really think. Uh, meanwhile, we also, I personally actually had some chats with them. You know, you are here after all. Uh, what do you want for the future? What are it was like? Mm -hmm. What are your best hopes for the future? If you can, I know it's not it's not easy now, but what could be the uh, scenario for you? Uh, mm -hmm. I think opening up some possibilities about the future was also uh, important in this hopeless moment. I mean, yeah. yeah, I was just going to kind of ask, you know, what difference does having had solution focused training and sort of believing in solution focused assumptions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what difference does that make to your own? hope and belief and possibility in a situation like that when you're working with people like that mm -hmm. wow okay <laughs> it's quite a question thank you okay yes um you know there was that there were not form they lost for example we met a guy who was a professor there uh, on medicine he had just one room with his you know family and stuff so even in this situation i saw that people has this inner inner resources which is like a belief which is like a hope and uh, the power to move on 
for their themselves, for their kids, for their uh, they for their idea about how life should be. So it feel, it felt to me like um, it was the time where they were feeling quite broken. Uh, but it was also the time to build a new life for themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw that they had also the passion and enthusiasm. We will do this. You no, know? <laughs> the next the next chapter will be different. Uh, the more I heard their answers, especially to our, I mean, to their um, answers about the best hope, um, future projection, yes, then it just really uh, gained uh, hope about our job. Like, um, and in the long run, we were in touch with them. We did this follow-ups and they were all yeah, doing good jobs, yes. They just, uh, kept working, growing up there like children. Uh, the life really went on, you know, it was quite nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we working with children there as well, so with families. With... Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. um, actually, we actually, um, were in touch with women, especially, and in this culture, the women are in charge of growing up. With children so um, it's i think the dynamics are there quite different but let me try to uh, explain um so once the mother is feeling more safe more regulated and hopeful for the future mm -hmm. have this enthusiasm power to go on you know this uh, affects the child immediately mm -hmm. giving hope yes we can do it let's continue let me find the school and go there uh, it's really uh, one, one, one person changing in the family affects the children and I believe the husband. In the beginning, the husbands were not quite open them to take these services, unfortunately. But the more they say see that the women are sleeping better, you know, smiling anymore, so then they also just keep encouraging. Um, and I think, you know, what's important is that uh, if, we, if this trauma or uh, however you call it, but trauma, post-traumatic stress symptoms actually were not uh, acknowledged, were not uh, treated, if this were the case. We know that the young people from these sort of, sort, of, sort of families and after all these traumatic experiences may start to use drugs, they may start to have some fights, uh, doing some antisocial behavior because where they come from, the killing was quite normal <laughs> stuff on a daily life. So um, I think uh, regulating the mother and talking about their relationships with their son and the daughter, you know, uh, the teenagers especially, uh, also uh, make the children calm down, regulated and feeling and, and hopeful for the future. Let me go to school and do whatever I need to do other than this uh, adverse behaviors. So, yes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, love Zainab. I was, yeah. I was, <laughs> was going to ask Zainab, because I know you said you did some follow-up. Was Were any of the mm -hmm. stories from the families that you met, did any su su well, particularly please you or surprise you? Or? Mm -hmm. oh. I'm quite impressed with your questions because I haven't told about it for many years to anyone, you know, because of this confidentiality stuff. I don't talk really. <laughs> so now I'm reaching out and feeling quite emotional about it. Um, I, you know, we stayed there for a while, but then we left. And then our friend uh, Mustafa stayed there. And then he, he stayed there more than almost two years or three years. So he, he, we were doing like some, some supervision, so we were following through him because he was local. We just went there to train the local therapist and help the uh, client in the first place. Then I heard about from him. What I heard was actually this uh, professor guy, I believe, because he didn't give up. He said, okay, this came up, okay, so I have to deal with it. I shouldn't say 
uh, why this happened, you know, I can't drink alcohol, no, nothing. He just didn't give up and he just uh, accredited himself to Turkey's uh, um, academic stuff. I don't know what's technical name in medics, but he just started to do his business in, in Turkey. And then he grow up his children, send them to school. So then he just encouraged them to keep studying and stuff. This is what I heard about him. He didn't give up. So all this story tells me like, don't give up and just keep asking the questions and just do the job. And it really helps. Mm -hmm. it really yes. mm -hmm. And I, I know you, you continue to do a lot of work in Turkey and I know that I've attended a couple of the oh, conferences. Yeah. Do you remember um, that that you that you're delivering, which was absolutely brilliant. So, how are you influencing um, mm -hmm. your partners in Turkey, the academics in Turkey? Okay. Thank you very much, also for this question. I take all my power from Chris. I should tell this in this definitely. Uh, <laughs> You know what this wonderful person did for me? I always hang, I hold this moment in, inside of me. I was just an interpreter for him only <laughs> when he was delivering trainings in Turkey. And I was only just interpreting. So while I'm interpreting, I learned, you know, <laughs> I heard the English and I told the Turkish. I heard the English, I told the Turkish, I got to the Turkish, asked them in English and then answered back, you know. So this trained my mind, actually. Then after me, one day, I was quite tired and went back to home. But Chris emailed to my boss in Turkey. He said that, uh, I don't know if Chris knows this, but my boss showed this email to me later on, after Chris left to Tur left Turkey to the UK. He, he wrote my boss that Zeynep is a, um, something valid, something really um, assets. She, she assets. She has assets, or she's asset. So you should allow her to do the trainings. Um, uh, does it make sense? So he, yeah. Yeah. He advertised somehow yeah. to my boss that my boss. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I don't, I remember this feeling like he trusted me, you know, that he, yeah. like, he can do it. I know it's this moment, one person saying to you that yes, you can do it, mm. he's the expert. And so I remember this one, and I said to myself, okay, I can't, um, you know, make him or my boss or Chris upset about it, so I should do my best. Then I felt like, okay, let me do the trainings. I I found this courage. Thank you very much again, Chris. I don't know, maybe if you don't know the word, if you want to uh, But then I started doing these trainings in Turkey, in Turkish. Uh, and this year, there's a university in Turkey, which is Bahçeşehir. Uh, they have a branch in London as well, actually. They are growing up. Uh, I started doing these solution focused courses there uh, in, in a university. Wow. Yeah, so they are very happy about it. It's also combined with trauma lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm teaching solution focused um, skills to the uh, counseling students. Uh, they are enthusiastic about it. Uh, they would love to meet people in the UK. They're asking, can we come to UK and can we meet people there, you know, huh? <laughs> in the young generation? Zeynep, with my, with my fantastic Turkish, I can do it for you. Oh. <laughs> I, I actually had the, I was very, very blessed to have Zeynep offer me a little bit of time where she was talking to me about asking solution focused questions in Turkish. Oh, wow. And Zeynep was so polite because she said, well, how do you, how do you ask the best hopes questions? I was like, um, do you remember? I was like, um, and and she, she just very kindly said, well, you could also say it like this. <laughs> and, she, and actually it, it's worked out really well because it's embedded in my head how I, how I ask the questions. Um, but it is sometimes. Sometimes the translation just isn't right, is it? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So mm. she did a fantastic job. Um, in such a short space of time, I felt so much more confident. 
So, so what do you ask and how does it translate? Okay. Oh, go on, Zainab. <laughs> Tara, don't ask sorry, like sorry, Aisha. <laughs> It, no, it is. It's, I, do, I didn't know that umut meant hope. Hmm. Shall I tell it? Yeah, go on. Go on, okay. Um, no, what you tell me. Okay. Uh, en iyi umutlarınız nelerdir? Yeah, see, look. God, for Christ's sake. Well, now you say it, Aisha. En iyi umutlarınız nedir? No, what did you say? Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. En iyi umutlarınız nedir? <laughs> yeah. Cevap ver, answer me. <laughs> um, she, Zeynep has such a beautiful dialect, and I'm Turkish Cypriot, so it's, it's totally not the same. Um, so just listening to Zeynep, and when I did attend um, uh, one of the training, no, it wasn't training, was it? It was like a conference that she was delivering. I was just listening, and I thought, wow, okay, that's it. Um, you know, you know, you know, here have a light bulb moment when you're at brief. When you're listening to Chris or Harvey or, or whoever, um, I had that little light bulb moment, the Turkish version. <laughs> I love that. It was a Turkish version of that, which was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. It I'm made a difference. Putting this into my heart. Thank you. Uh, you know, I don't know the other cultures, but we are quite problem focused as we have lots of problems, I believe. <laughs> so it's not easy for us to change our language, change our mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not really easy. But once you do that, it's just uh, quite brilliant. And I'm quite honored that Aisha, you were there on this day because I was giving training to, not a training, but an introduction. Uh, mm -hmm. Our conference to Azerbaijan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know in English. Yeah, it's Azer Azerbaijan. Right. Okay, same. So it was in Turkish. Baisha also came there. It was an honor for me. Uh, yes, it's not. The translation is not always easy. Uh, it shouldn't, you know, I don't want to have any lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Carefully, I've been running the trainings in Turkish uh, for the last few years, and since the Chris told me that yes, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's lovely. Yeah. Well, when we when we did uh, do that course together in 2019, I think um, I was having to do two jobs, two things at the same time, so I kept having to leave you on your own. And uh, I got a bit worried and I remember and sort of, are you all right, are you all right? You kind of shooed me off. Good <laughs> <laughs> uh, sign. Uh, mm. It worked very, very well, just um, without, you couldn't even plan uh, because it was so disrupted. And uh, we just yeah. played tic tac, mm. swapping over, getting up, doing a bit, you got up, I a bit. This is very, very, very nice. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes regret um, recommending you so strongly to Emre, Emre Konuk, who is the um, head of DBE, this amazing uh, clinic in um, the Warmer Clinic in, in Istanbul. But Emre actually um, sat with John Weekland while he was supervising Steve DeShazer on the phone. Uh, way before Solution Podcast got dreamed up, uh, Emery yeah. got to the MRI back in the um, early 80s. And um, anyway, but uh, the times I've been there uh, and you and Emery have taken me out for dinner, <laughs> taken back to my hotel, and then you've gone off and Emery said, right, we've got to go and prepare that thing for tomorrow. You and Emery gone back to the office at 10 o'clock at night. Wow. This is <laughs> This is very Maybe I didn't do you a favor. <laughs> so, um, what is the um, so what are you up to at the moment, Sadie? What is the Institute for Change? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Tell us about that. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, it's my baby. <laughs> it's my dream. It, it's, it's it's an amazing 
uh, it's an amazing thing, you know, it's just let me tell you what it is. So it's uh, just like Chris told right now, I and my boss Emre uh, has been working so hard really on these projects, trainings, uh, therapy, supervisions and everything. And actually I had quite good opportunity to train with these people. You know, I, I, I'm super, I got supervision with lots of hours of supervision from him. So I started to feel uh, much more confident about counseling and therapy. And also Chris encouraged me, yes, you can do it in terms of trainings. Then I actually uh, had some steps about EMDR. I became EMDR Europe accredited therapist and supervisor and stuff. And uh, these days, uh, my husband got a job offer from UK. So he said, do you want to do you want to go? I was, uh, yes, let's just try it. You know, it's time to try and, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. And then the Institute for Change is my own uh, business where I deliver uh, counseling, supervision and trainings in the UK, actually. And uh, Emre gave its name. It's actually quite a solution focused name. We wanted to use change uh, actually, uh, to give some hope maybe to people and the business itself. And again, I knocked on Chris's door when he came to UK on the first day. He was not there this time. <laughs> <laughs> the door was locked and it was just silence. Then I texted him, oh, you're not here. Then he was again kind and warm and invited us to him to his home. Uh, one more time, he opened the blue door to me and said that yes, you can see your clients here at Brief. It was like a dream for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Then thanks to him, I had the opportunity to see my clients in Barbican, which is the best of the world, I believe. <laughs> best place of the world. So I, I did work hard, Chris, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very hard. <laughs> I'm still there. <laughs> You've never stopped. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. I started having some uh, clients in the UK. I did. The, the, I, I'm delivering uh, counseling services to individuals, couples, and families, and some young people. Uh, I have also PhD on counseling from Turkey. Um, yeah, I'm usually working on anxieties, uh, depression, relationship problems, uh, anything that may bother people. Any, I usually also work with some migrated communities uh, who are having difficulty in adaptation to the uh, new life to UK. Yeah, and in my master's, I studied on this culturally uh, sensitive psychotherapy as well. So, uh, I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> it sounds like you are doing a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. And very busy. Yes, he's very busy, yes. And I'm also giving some supervision to my colleagues, especially in Turkey, uh, and doing some solution-focused brief therapy trainings as well, uh, usually in Turkish, but uh, I would love them with... Doing, I would love to do them with Aisha as well, either in Turkish and in Turkey or around, maybe, yes. I, I, I was just thinking I need to attend some of the SFBT training that you deliver in Turkish. Um, mm. So let me know when they are and I'll book myself on and then maybe we can look at delivering something together. Yes, yeah. this would be lovely. Amazing. Oh, God, I've got to start talking Turkish. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I've got a Turkish TV, speak Turkish to parents. And if my mum's watching, I'm sorry, I haven't been speaking so much Turkish. You will Turkish, be now. Turkish, everybody, mm -hmm. Including you, Tara. You're going to have to use, everyone's going to have to start using Google Translate. Okay, I can listen. Else? I might not be able to respond, but I will listen. <laughs> just, just, just listen. That's what I need. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to attend, Zeynep. Yeah, more than one. Yeah. If I, I have anything, I, I'll tell you. I was going to ask saying it because I, I think um, I think a lot of the families that we work with, you yeah. have a generation that's came over, mm -hmm. that's uh, holding on to those roots uh, really, really tightly, mm -hmm. and obviously <clears throat> a generation born in a completely different uh, yeah. environment, different setting, 
Mm. And there's always that kind of that battle between the old and the new. Um, I don't know. What what have you found works or sort of what advice or whatever you would give? Because we find that so much, saying it. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very important. All the literature like points out this point definitely. Um, we should adapt. In short, <laughs> we have to adapt. This is this is survival. Uh, it's not easy, I know, but uh, I always talk about the possibility of adaptation. Uh, what is your type of adaptation, maybe? But the only solution is adaptation, because the other other uh, goes either to like divorce or going back uh, or feeling like losing, blah blah. So. Uh, yeah, we usually focus on how to adapt, what would work for them, yes, what is the miracle for adaptation for themselves uh, as a family, because otherwise mm -hmm. you bring up, I mean raise up, sorry, to raise up children here in any, any new country, but you stay with the past, mm -hmm. the conflict which is in your mind comes into your home, uh, yeah. in your relationship. You know, the conflict between you and the community, new community, comes into your uh, relationship to your like loved one. So we must, we have to talk about adaptation. But smoothly, softly, I always mention about adaptation. Yeah, they are way of adaptation. Can be built by pollution focused questions, I believe. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to kind of, I'm just kind of imagining what difference it makes. You know, when you're talking about adaptation and each of their preferred futures, you know, mm -hmm. and having that opportunity in that family environment to hear each other's um, and then kind of inviting them to work together and move forward together. How does that happen in a sort of family session? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not easy in the beginning, I believe, <laughs> because usually what I see is that the young generation brings their mother uh, or mother and father, but usually the mother, to the session. They say, oh, I would like to go out and hang out with friends, uh, but this is quite not possible. It's, it's forbidden because they can tell about me bad things when I go out with boys, let's say. You know, it's not acceptable in this culture at all. But she's this uh, young and you know wants to enjoy her life outside and stuff. Uh, but this creates create big, big uh, within the family. So the young one maybe started to cut herself, you know, mm -hmm. escape from home. Things like that may happen actually. Uh, in this case, actually, I I want to talk to uh, both of them, asking what are your best of our meetings. Yeah, actually, uh, I would love to hear their best of both of them. So usually it, it comes around like getting all well with each other, having peace at home. So I also ask about its miracle, actually, how I mean, how would you understand that you're having peaceful, uh, healthy, good relationship in this new country if, if they want to stay, they usually want to stay in this culture in this you know community how does it look like to you and i get its details mm -hmm. um, and i eventually tara this is what i understand mother says comes to a decision like is my child's happiness important uh, mm -hmm. or not yes mm -hmm. and they tell to each other at some point like once you put me the, all these rules or all, all these um yeah, limiting rules. I, I don't feel important, so I also come a point to ask a parent, like, what is important for you? Is this bond with your child or your bond with this old rule and stuff? So they usually choose their children and you find, I mean, they find their own solution around uh, having this bond and being in this new culture and community. Uh, I think this is where it comes to trust children. If you can tell the children, I, I use I use the strategic interventions like, okay, let's give trust to parents. Okay, I'm with you. Just let's try like some uh, small games like 
go to a friend, tell them that I will be at nine at, at home by nine and be at home by nine. So let's build the trust first. Uh, then your mother or father will give you permission to go. Meanwhile, uh, the child learns to uh, appropriate behaviors to protect themselves and stuff. And I also tell the mother like, um, so you should uh, somehow, I mean, do you want to prepare your children to the future in this country because they will go to, let's say, uni after they are teenage, so, or not, I mean, do you want to prepare them or not? I'll use some strategic intervention from MRI actually, from Emre, and uh, they usually choose their children, they usually choose uh, to uh, prepare them to life, and uh, give them some space to build the trust and to protect themselves. I mean, by the time parents trust them, so they allow them to go out or to adapt this culture. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they also find themselves in a place where they are doing like the other people around themselves. So, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I, yeah, I think it's. it's given giving young people the opportunity you know they make some really, really they're very wise is what i noticed from the conversations that i have and they make really reasonable choices when they're asked the right questions and yeah i, th I think um sorry chris go on i just i'm thinking uh Zena, thank you for my experience of becoming solution program etc uh, I was with two very, very, very close friends, so we were like a, a tripod, really, which is very hard to knock over. One of us was a bit wobbly, the other two would hold things. Mm -hmm. You've done this, really, on your own. I just wonder how you've done it. How have you uh, come so far and created so much on your own, under your own steam? Because um, it seems... Um, it's frozen. For, for. Oh, has it frozen for you? Yes, it's frozen sorry. On me. Uh, yes, no, no. I missed it. Sorry. Are you back? I'm back now. Yes, sorry. Yes. You're sorry. Back. <laughs> yeah, it's just very, very impressive with the fact that you've um, done that, done that on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how, how have you managed to achieve so much on your own when Chris had two partners with him, almost like a tripod, and you couldn't knock over, and yet you have achieved so much on your own steam? Thank you. I would love to have this conversation again. I like this so much. <laughs> but but what, what is it about you that, that keeps you motivated and keeps you moving forward? Yes, yes. Um, okay, wonderful. Thank you. I don't know. I have this passion inside. I have, I, I have this passion inside to, to help, to give uh, healthy and trustworthy solutions or, you know, uh, help support to people eventually. So to do this, I would love to train myself uh, properly. And all, I mean, this is like a system, so you have to uh, work hard uh, and you have to get good supervision, you have to get good training, and you should give good service. It's like a circle. So this is uh, keeping me like alive and around. Uh, but in terms of like Institute for Change or the UK, I, I don't know, I have lots of good dreams. I would love to train many people. I am imagining that the people who knew me or all these beautiful trainers train uh, helping to other people. Mm -hmm. So this really uh, attracts me uh, when someone is not finding a solution uh, to, to encourage them, to support them somehow. Um, when I see this picture in the future, either my students are helping someone else or my clients mm -hmm. as well. Uh, this keeps me like, yes, let's do this. And I love being here. I love um, being around the solution focus family. So I'm happily doing it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. it's, 
It's lovely. It's lovely to hear, hear your passion and <clears throat> um, that that in the passion to want to help people. And I think that drives a lot of people in this profession. Yeah. We we don't do it for the money, Zainab. Because you know. You know. <laughs> um, but ha having that passion also, because um, what Chris was saying is he had two other people. If maybe oh, yeah. things maybe things didn't go the right way, if okay. if a case didn't work for me, I can speak to Aisha. Uh, so for anyone new who still has that wonderful passion, how 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 would they get over disappointment? Because we want to help people so much, but sometimes we just can't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes something falls short. Or how how do you keep that going in yourself? Quite therapeutic question. I should think of all the things. <laughs> Because I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of one of our colleagues who takes it really personally if things don't go right for the family, and I, I really feel for him. Um, and it's when you were talking, it just made me think of him. That was all. Uh -huh. I think yes, it's quite inner stuff for me, but I feel also I don't know. I feel quite connected to uh, uh, my supervisor, Emre in Turkey, here in Greece. I feel like I'm quite uh, in touch with uh, like people who inspired me, who supervised me. Uh, this is this is I think uh, good enough for me, uh, from my perspective. And yeah, I have a quite supportive family and a husband, so they also encourage me a lot, and they are like live the life. Just do your job. We will take care of it. I don't know. <laughs> After three months, if it's going to still be the same for me. <laughs> but <laughs> they are my mom, my my husband are very supportive. I think the family uh, works at this stage for me. I don't know. Maybe this is my way, but yes. Mm. It's burning inside usually. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's no, no. You're you're right. It's it's utilizing the people that you trust and you're comfortable with around you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and being open and honest about you know the challenges and 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 all the fantastic thing that's happening, but also the challenges that they might be facing, so we can work through it together. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Especially if you feel that you're working on your own, yeah. it's kind of teaming up with others, isn't it? Yes, um, which is which is something I love about the the SF community because there's so many networking events and you know just just email Chris and say Chris would you like to join FBS chat as well? you know it's just it's, everyone's just so giving in this community. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. yes the community, the network, parents, husband, brother, and supervisors, trainers, clients themselves sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> So, where do you see yourself in a year's time, Zainab? So, if we were to have an FBS chat next year, this time next year, and we say, Zainab, what have you been up to? What might you say? Okay. Now, I'm about to um, be an EMDR, accredited EMDR trainer. Mm -hmm. I would love to be an EMDR trainer in one year, definitely. And I am also trying to get my accreditation in the UK from like HCPC or somebody. I would love to get them. And with this uh, new step of my life, I am uh, also trying to build up a team, like to be like a real institute. This is maybe where it comes to quiz and question again. I would like to have some uh, colleagues with me uh, who we are like a team. They also get focus there and stuff so i would like to have my institute like an institute really uh, if we are back to work i don't know how it happens but either in a place or an online uh, in a little bit more crowded family <laughs> yes I, and with you with you all you guys actually let's just stay in and together oh so nice Oh, and 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 and, and um, I I think everyone knows. I know Chris knows you quite well, and um, Joe and Tara have met you today. But I think when you've got your mind set on something, Zainab, I don't think anything is going to stop you. You're going to, yeah. 
In include, include, including many people that might be around you. Oh, <laughs> they, they won't be stopping. But we've actually come to the end of the chat. So, any last comments from from anybody, for Zainab? I'm just was thinking I could would just love to talk to you some more. I'm just fascinated by and really yeah inspired by what you do and yeah so an opportunity for more conversation would be lovely I think yeah. Pleasure. So it's been yeah it's been great yeah, speaking to you like this saying that we've never. Uh, quite had conversations like this have we <laughs> it's really it's it's really beautiful of my grandson I was just about to say it's really beautiful to see the connection you know yeah. uh, between the two of you yeah so thank you for sharing yeah. that with us because yeah obviously very special yeah and um, okay Thank, thank you, Zainab, Chris, Tara, for spending this time with us. Zainab, uh, your passion is obvious. Um, I almost, it's like hope exudes from you, which is must, especially in, in, the, in the areas that you've worked in, hope is so essential and um, it, it just shines through in you. So this has been a, a wonderful hour for me. Thank you so much. Yeah. And say not me. Tesha Kura Dedim. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, said, Is my mother watching? <laughs> she was watching. Let me show you. I can prove it. Look. There Ooh. you go. Ah. <laughs> my mother is the queen of emojis, guys, and, and gifts. gifts. Whenever you see something that I put up, it could be about anything. She'll put an emoji or a gif. And Joe will ah. say, Your mum's your been at it again. <laughs> Sorry, Mum, if you heard that. Um, but thank, thank you so much, Zane. Honestly, you're very, very inspiring, and I, I can't wait to connect with you very soon sure. um, for many reasons. But I'd love to, I'd love to, and I need to find the confidence to do this. I'd love to arrange an FBS chat where we talk in Turkish. Oh, yes. Wow. That would be amazing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We, we need to do that fairly soon, I think, for obvious reasons. Um, and I will have to do some homework as to what I'll be asking and how I will be asking it. Mm -hmm. I, will oh, no, I will send you a cheat sheet, don't worry. <laughs> do you see why I love this woman? <laughs> <laughs> Problem, solution, there you go. See? There you go. She helps me overcome the bumps on the road. I will just send you the sheet. I love it. But I, so I will be in touch about arranging something in Turkish because I know that there are uh, a lot of um, Turkish clients and yeah. Turkish speaking mm -hmm. people out there that might be reluctant to kind of receive support. Um, mm -hmm. There is a bit of a stigma yeah. for, 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 for some, as there is with every culture, but mm -hmm. I can speak Turkish. Joe's Italian's rubbish, otherwise we could do one in Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, but thank you so much. And for, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really bad. Uh, he's taught me a few words. I won't repeat them. Um, I know some Irish. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could we could do it. We could do it. So uh, next week we have Elliot and Adam joining us Ooh. on Tuesday at seven p.m. Um, and then we've got quite a few things coming up. Uh, but I will remind you guys of what that is next week. Can I, so guys, can you just stay there for a couple of minutes so we can say goodbye? And to everybody else, I will see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.